And Nicola Hill joins us now live from London. Hi, Nicola. Well, I mean, a lot of people, thousands actually, have signed up for these trials in spite of the very obvious risks. Have scientists and medical professionals ever seen this kind of, I want to call it altruism, I don't know if that's dramatic, but have they seen this before uh, in, in testing circumstances prior to COVID-19? Yes, they've had um, human challenge trials for vaccines, for malaria, for dengue, for flu. Um, but of course, in those situations, you've got a treatment if something goes wrong. What's so remarkable for the people who signed up for, for this database one day sooner is the fact that at the moment we've got very, very limited um, treatment options for, for them. And the figure now is naturally nearly 29,000 people have signed up and they come from 102 countries apparently. And they're aged 18 to 80, though anybody over the age of 30 is highly unlikely to be included in a trial like this. We saw Gregory in my report then. He's a public health doctor, so he's very aware of what the pandemic's doing. And that's why he said to me he wants to do his bit. His sister works on the um, front line. She's a doctor as well, an NHS doctor. And he felt that if he signed up, he could do something to perhaps bring the vaccine sooner. And he said the risk for him and people like Gabrielle and some other people that I spoke to is equal to that of a live kidney donation. Um, which again is very altruistic, or a woman continuing her pregnancy, which is actually something I hadn't heard of before. Right. Then tell us, I mean, how high are expectations? With, with people giving this much to these trials, so altruistically, I guess that is the appropriate word. I mean, how high are expectations and are they realistic? Well, actually, the WHO, the World Health Organization, has given a very cautious approval to these trials, which might seem quite surprising, but has said it does have to involve people who are aged between 18 and 30. And it says the statistics for them dying from the virus is 0.03%. So that's why they consider it safe, apparently, for them to, to sign up for this. Now, as I said in my report, Josh Morrison, who is the guy who set up One Day Sooner, and interestingly is somebody who has donated a kidney to a complete stranger. He says he's having these confidential conversations. He wouldn't tell me who he's having them with. But it has been reported that Johnson & Johnson are certainly interested in human challenge trials. Um, and as I've said, they have been done in other disease areas. What's interesting is if they are allowed to go ahead, it really does shorten the time span. The problem we've got at the moment, we've got thousands of people who volunteered for the vaccines that are being developed, but we don't know when they're going to come into contact with the virus. It, it could be months, it could be days, it could be years, it, whenever. Um, with all the lockdowns, with all the social distancing, they might never come into contact with the virus. If somebody takes part in a human challenge trial, possibly with a weakened version of the virus, and the problem is, can they recreate the virus in laboratory in very controlled conditions? If they can do that, then maybe we can get this vaccine sooner, but I don't know when it's going to happen. Okay, Nicola, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for that. That is all for this.